I am Steve Maeda, and I just interviewed... Luke Lehman. That's his real voice, by the way. And uh, did we totally blow the, the podcast or what? What do we talk about today? Um, masturbation, drugs, and fitness. Only the best topics. So if you like that, keep watching. It's freaking crazy. Well, all right. Hell yeah. Hopefully that camera's going. Good. Woo! <laughs> Okay, so I'm Steve Maeda, you're Luke Lehman. That's me. And uh, it's a crazy story how we met because I hired some, I actually didn't hire somebody. I took a 30 day challenge with somebody and they were like, you have to hire a specific type of guy to show you how to do these lifts. And you showed me. And that was actually the only time we met up until like a short while ago. We did, yeah. So it was in 2013. That was, yeah, so long ago. We met. (laughs) I tortured you for like an hour and a <laughs> I half. Dude, we, I didn't tell you this, but the first day we did the elevated split squats, yeah. the rear elevated split squats, both Maria and I vomited. Yes. And we had like an avocado <laughs> like two hours before or maybe three. So it was like we were, it was like just stomach acid. That's a great texture to be coming out after <laughs> split squats. <laughs> so you're like a, a fitness expert, dude, but you're also... Uh, I, I, I don't know. I just follow you online. And you I'm just say a cool dude. Stuff. I'm just a dude. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. I'm not an expert. I, <laughs> you know, I don't. I don't believe in that. You know, nobody's an expert because there's always things to there's always things to find out and know. And you know, at the point where you feel like you're an expert, you meet someone that makes you feel like you're a fucking idiot again. And that's what's happened to me my entire career. Once you think like ah, I got this shit sorted out, you meet somebody that's like on a whole nother level and they look at you and they're like, you don't know shit. And you look at them and you go, Oh, I don't, I don't know shit, but I want to know what that guy knows. So then you get to their level and you find out there's another level. And it's just, it's like a big video game. Who's the last person that made you feel that? Oh, uh, fuck. Brian Walsh. And what does he do? Brian Walsh is a, a doctor of uh, naturopathy uh, in Maryland. And he is like, He's one of my mentors, so everything you'd want to know about health, mitochondria, diabetes, like all this stuff, like he can just, he can just get, you give him a whiteboard, give him a marker, and he'll just talk for hours on anything that has to do with the body. And for me, somebody that can show mastery, like put them on a whiteboard, show me what you got off the top of your head. And that's how I know when people actually know what the fuck they're talking about, because that's the problem with the fitness industry right now is it's so easy to make yourself look like an expert because you can watch someone else's video or you can copy and paste someone else's mm-hmm. material, but then you can't do anything when you show up and all you have is the marker, right? Yeah, that's, that's like one of the crazy things about coaching is that <clears throat> there's a lot of people who can look good always, but to actually reform somebody, like because yeah. you've yeah. trained athletes that have won like high level competitions and these types of things and you have to be so specific with it um man i so i want to know what blew your mind about michael walsh like what was the specific thing where you brian walsh brian walsh um yeah man you know what because i'm an educator that's what i do now i've gone from you know being a personal trainer and then you know training athletes and then now traveling the world teaching other coaches what to do and and how the body really works it's the way he teaches, like the way he takes something that's so incredibly complex and mm. makes it where he, he could take a five-year-old and teach them about the electron transport chain in the mitochondria. And like, like right now you're like, oh, yeah, what, the fuck, what the fuck is that? That's what makes ATP, right? It makes your energy in your body. He can explain it in such a way and draw it on the board that would make anyone, even a five-year-old, understand how the body <clears throat> works. All right. So I, I'm not even going to get into that because you're not Brian Walsh. But um, but so this is one of those things, man, And because you work at things at a different level. One of my biggest regrets in life is I've never given you money to actually train under you because I, I, I remember when we were doing the lifts. You've talked about it a lot of times. Um, I, we were just talking about <laughs> So we were like, man, it's so great when you deal with this type of businessman and they don't bullshit and they're just like, here's the money, all that sort of stuff. I've hit you up like, probably four or five times of like, Hey man, how do I do this? Yeah. And then like, anyway, whatever. So yes, yeah, I'm obviously not one of those guys that's great <laughs> to work with. But, but the thing is, is that 
you deal with people on just a different level of health and fitness. Mm. And I think that's the big dream of everybody is that, you know, it's like, Luke, I have high blood pressure. Luke, I'm losing it. Luke, I'm 40 and I can't, you know, I'm telling you all the real stuff about my life. Uh, let's, like, let's go into your console right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I remember when we did the lifts, you were like crazy specific and it changed things. And, I, and I, I'll probably get this wrong. Okay. But when we did the rear elevated split squat, the front leg that was squatting, I remember for me, you turned my toe outside. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I see pictures of people, they're all inside, right? And I naturally want to go inside. Yeah. That changed everything. Or even like I put, this is kind of stupid, but I put the, my toe, uh, like my pivot point of my toe on the thing behind me, raising it up. And when I used the instep, changed everything. The little tuning of it made such a big difference. And I remember you were like, man, you can change anything in the body. Like you're bow legged. I'm like, thanks, Luke. <laughs> it's because you're big balls. That's what's making you bow legged, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you're like that could change yeah. with like how you use your body in the yeah. different tendon tension or whatever it was yeah i mean look that's coaching right it's a, and it takes a long time to build that kind of eye for things and there's a reason you would turn the toe out there's a reason you would turn the toe in and looking at the program you had i was like okay i'm looking at the program i'm looking at the way you're moving all right it's probably going to be better if you turn the, the foot out like 15 degrees here yeah there might be someone i'd say turn the toes in five degrees it, just, it depends what we're trying to get out of it yeah. you look at the back foot does it need to go in or out well i don't know does it need to be do i need to create extra mobility under load or am i just trying to lift more weight or yeah. you know what's the sport you know it's it's the little nuances and things like that which makes you want to change an exercise to for a specific output because at the end of the day all you're doing is looking for a specific adaptation so that specific adaptation you have to look at what the client wants to get out of it and say okay now this is why we would make this small change here and the small change there why we would use certain sets and reps and rest and things like that and why we why we would write a program the way we write it because it has to be uh, a detailed specific stimulus so that they get that adaptation that they're looking for. What do you think? So you deal with pro athletes, but you also do you deal with a lot of clients who in terms of fitness, because I know mm -hmm. you do more than that now, but um, in terms of fitness that are just average guys like me, I'm yeah. not yeah. trying to. Look, the majority of what we've done now is like I've I got I, 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 yeah, I did a lot of you know training athletes. And, you know, the, the thing is, I, training athletes is really fun because it's easy. Right. They just do shit. You say, OK, yeah. I need you to run your head into this wall and they go, OK, what percentage of intensity, how many times, how much rest in between impacts. And you're like, you tell them they just do it because they have things that are motivating enough to make them need to do it. Like if I improve a pro athlete's performance, point zero 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 one percent, that could be another one point five million dollars in his bank account. Yeah. Here, right. <clears throat> but it, 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 to me, it's too easy. You know, it's fun and it's like, hey, I, I train this guy and that guy. But the hard part is training general population, just regular guys like you and me. Like, just yeah. like we don't like, OK, what do you mean like you come on. Like you're me, no, no, no way. I'm, I'm there now. I'm there now. I, I fucking I hardly train anymore. I'm like you. I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I do a lot of stretching and yoga and I go for walks and I've started doing geocaching. Do you do, you do that No. I don't know what that is. There's a where it's a it's cool. It's like a thing where people will hide things like and then you have to go on the coordinates. There's apps, right? And you have to find them. And when you find them, they have like puzzles and shit you have to solve or you can't find what they've hidden. And then you get it and you write your name on it and log it. Some Aussie thing or <laughs> no, no, it's all dude. It's all around the world. But that's what I do for a lot of my exercise now is I geocache. I go like I've searched out three or four of them since we've been here. Oh shit! And so, so Austin, yeah. So there's you, people moving and shaking on that. So now. you just walk around and you find <clears throat> stuff. And there's people who have gone to fucking a hundred different countries and found things that people hide. God damn. You logged it, you found it, and you put it up. So there's fun things you can do for fitness. Like I'm not, I'm not a huge like I don't bodybuild anymore, I don't compete anymore, I don't powerlift anymore. I just fucking now I just want to feel good and not be in pain, just like anybody else that's over 40 years of age, right? So like, <laughs> it's like my whole my whole shtick for training now is I don't really train athletes anymore. I just train general population. Yeah. And the reason we went into that is because there was no one teaching personal trainers how to train normal people. 
like every single uh, continuing education course that you do outside of getting your certification, your initial certification was all about training pro athletes. And so I taught people how to train pro athletes for 10 years. Yeah. And then when I, when I actually had to train normal people, I was ripping my fucking hair out. Like yeah. I didn't know how to deal <clears throat> with Susie Muffin Top from fucking next door, <laughs> you know, Joe Dingleberry. I, I had no idea, like, because there's a whole psychology aspect of these people don't want to be dick skin lean. They want to wake up and not have pain. They want to take a normal shit. They want to sleep normally. Like, they're, everything that drives their desire for health is different oh, than, yeah. than somebody yeah. who wants to, like, have fucking veins in his elbows. Yeah. Like, it's a whole totally different thing. and. And I had to relearn again how to train normal people coming from that athletic background. Dude, that's crazy. Hold on, I'm gonna move this camera to make you look just that yeah, much better. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Now, now we're talking about health. Just to show I'm a normal guy, I'm gonna have a sip of my Lone Star here. Well, you are a normal guy. You know, my favorite thing about Lone Stars is when I used to drink, and the bottles had those. Because when cats. I used to drink, yeah. Yeah. Fuck, dude. When I, <laughs> I talk about drinking, I can't hold the camera right, but. I, I, I used to, when I used to drink, they had the different label, yeah. right? Dude, those riddles would blow my, and I'm not good with riddles. Some of my friends would be like fucking wasted yeah. and they could hit them. I've, I've gotten like two. I think, oh, I love them. Life. I'm, I'm yeah. so good at riddles. Yeah. yeah. I, I used to collect all those caps, man. But, Jesus. You know, it's funny because I don't really do, I don't really do drugs anymore, you know? And, uh, I never really had a big problem with them. I mean, I did them. But it was one of those like, yeah, cool, Friday night, Saturday night things. It wasn't one of those things where I woke up on a Tuesday morning and railed off some crystal, you know? <laughs> you know, it was, it was like, it wasn't one of those things. Like, it was like, okay, it's <laughs> fucking Saturday. I'm going to take some shrooms or whatever right, right. And, and watch some movies and have a good time. Yeah. And, you know, I, I actually got to the point where I was like, yeah, I'm tired of drinking. And um, I'm going to go on this 28-day, you know, alcohol-free thing and, uh, there, there's a book, there's a, a, a group on Facebook called One Year No Beer. And I was like, okay, these guys, and then these guys wrote a book. It's like the 28 day alcohol free challenge. And I, fuck, I've, over the last probably 15 years, I I've probably can't even tell you yeah. 28 days where I've gone without having a drink, right? So I'm in London. I'm on like day number seven. I found out my dad dies. Right. He dies, oh, shit. dies of cancer, multiple myeloma, which it was expected. But I thought I was so close to like getting home and seeing him before yeah. it happened. And man, I just fucking lost it. Like I fucking you caved and got I done. caved. And now I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm right at the end of it. So like this is like right at the end of my drinking. And then I'm going to do my 28 day alcohol free thing. And then I'm just, pff, I'll be done with it for a while. Let's get back yeah. to the real issue here. Lone Star. Favorite Texas beer is what? Uh, favorite Texas beer, man. Yeah. That's a that is a toss up. You know, you got it. You got a shiner. You got to look yeah, at shiner. I know shiner. It shiners, throws everything off. It does. But then yeah. you, you also like Ziegenbach is yeah. also it's up there. If you like the dark beers, you yeah. know. But I, I still I still have a love for Lone Star because it's the national beer of Texas. And <laughs> but not Pearl. So Pearl is out of the Pearl, question. Pearl, yeah, you know my grandfather drank Pearl. My grandfather drank Pearl, and that and Bushes. Like I, I remember, I remember in high school, you could get an eighteen pack of Bushes beer for like five dollars and ninety nine cents. <laughs> we would just get ca like cases of these things, right? Yeah, oh god, right. man, all is great. I mean, I didn't grow up in Texas, but I've right. lived here for fifteen years, and so, like, the and I drank a lot. Like, basically, I drank a lot before I moved to Texas, and then as soon as I did, it was like, man, this is where you go to drink a lot and, like, yes. make mistakes. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's the land of regrets. Right? So the day before, the day before I moved, or the week before I moved to Texas, not the day before, but a couple days before, there was this party bus, and it was, like, for this guy named Rocco DeLuca, and, like, Dave Matthews managed him, and uh, Kiefer Sutherland was, like, his buddy, and they were, like, a part of this whole thing. And man, I just got ripped and peed everywhere and like got in a fight with some guy. I got like my ass kicked. Like it was crazy. And the whole time I'm like talking shit because I'm drunk, man. And this was over like a six, this is a long story, but like a six hour period. Yeah. Like I bit somebody during the fight. It was like crazy. 
And uh, then, like, I just remember being held by my friend to pull me away. And there's, like, these dudes punching me as, as I'm being, like, taken away. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to kill you. Which, clearly, I was losing, right? Yeah. So, anyway, I just remember my friends were like, man, when you move to Texas, you're going to get killed. Yeah. Here's what happened. <laughs> First week in Texas, somebody hits me over the head with a beer bottle and it didn't break. And then I double-legged them because I wrestled in high school. I'm not, and yeah. I, I wrestled today and I almost puked. So I'm not good at wrestling, right? <laughs> but, um, I was like 10 minutes into it. I'm like, this is not jujitsu, man. Oh, God, this sucks. But anyway, so I took the dude down and like beat him up or something. Yeah. And nobody fucked. And also I was like just crazy. So people like my friends got in fights and got beaten up and cold yeah. cocked and shit like that. But I think they were like, ah, Steve's like, you know. Yeah. Because I wasn't the dude that woke up and did crystal meth on Sunday morning. I just did it when it was in front of my... I said, uh, meth, was, meth wasn't my thing. But. Same. It's like, I'm not going to do this tonight. <laughs> then somebody lays it on the table. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to go get more. some more. <laughs> dude, but, um... You know, here's yeah, the thing but, with Texas. Like, Texas is, is one of those places where... This isn't the place you want to come get in a fight in, right? Because yeah. this is... This isn't like what you normally see. Like normally, like you see guys that talk shit and they don't actually do anything. In right. Texas, you get oh, your yeah. fucking teeth knocked yeah. out. Yeah. And I remember, I remember um, what what was the MTV where they all the people lived in the same the real world, the real yeah. world. And it was real world yeah. Austin. And one of the dumbasses, he was from New York or some shit, and he came down. And he was acting like a real fucking douchebag on on Dirty Sixth. Yeah, and some dude just fucking cranked him and broke his jaw. And it's yeah, like, and my I was watching that with friends of mine, and I, I can't remember where I was, but it, we weren't in Texas, and they were like, "Is that how it is?" And I go, "Yeah, you don't go downtown. Like I've been stabbed on Sixth Street. A dude stabbed me. Jesus right? Christ. Where'd you get stabbed, man? I fucking slit my arm open. Oh yeah, you've shown me that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been, yeah. I put him in a coma. But yeah. anyways, like you don't. You don't do that down here because yeah. you will get either punched, shot, yeah. or stabbed, especially yeah. if you go down to Dirty Sixth Street. It's not a good place to be. I think I'm going to – I messed up on this. I think I'm going to, like, say that Austin is so much nicer now. Because though I moved to Austin in 2009, and it was always pretty yeah. chill. Because in compared to, like, Fort Worth or the small – like, <clears throat> if you go to, like, Stephenville or Mineral Wells or what like these smaller DFW towns yeah. like White Settlement like who yeah. else yeah. I was like yeah. to, to me now White Settlement is not a big deal like the name but when I first moved here I'm like what there's a place called White Settlement well, I remember I remember I was at like church camp or something when I was a kid and some kid was like yeah I'm from White Settlement and I'm like what an odd name for a place because <laughs> I grew up in Mahia, Texas where it's like 50% white 50% black where's that and, Mahia is uh shit. It's uh, about an hour and a half away from here. So you go to you go to Waco and then go east about thirty okay. minutes. So like I grew up in a really like really poor, really mixed race town. So that wasn't a big deal to me. I never thought anything about it. And then you know you go and you like white settlements like this really rich part of Dallas and yeah. I meet these rich kids and they're like yeah I'm from white settlement. I'm like what a <laughs> weird fucking name. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so. Uh... The, the back to the non-drinking and then yeah. relapsing, caving. Yeah, yeah, caving in. So your your father passed when you wrote something on Facebook, in uh, I mean, do you want to talk about this or no? Yeah, I can talk. talk. I'll talk about anything. I, I'm you know I'm at the point where I'm now like a week ago I would just be fucking breaking down right now, but you know, uh, it's life, man. Everybody dies. It's where none of us are getting out of this alive, and you know you'd rather see. I, I'd rather like my parents go before me than for me to know that right. I go before yeah. them and yeah. them having to go through yeah. that stuff. And it's crazy. Yeah. And you know, we had a lot of time to, to prepare because I mean, he was like 18, 18 or 19 months past expiration date. He was only supposed to last like three months. And yeah. we didn't tell him that he was dying. We were like, no, no, it's fine. You just, we just manage it and blah, 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 blah. Because we knew the <clears> minute <throat> somebody finds out you're done because you're just going to give up. So we didn't want him to give up. He knew that, he had because he had cancer yeah, yeah. Yeah. stage four multiple myeloma which is there's no i mean that's no survival rate for that you're done right all you can do is like try to do radiation and chemo and just try to keep it uh repressed enough to keep going but yeah it's not a good quality of life and and honestly like if you get cancer you have to kind of weigh your options and when you look at some of the research on what they when they ask doctors like they give doctors a list like if you get this cancer or this cancer what would you do a lot of them was like fuck it i would just let cancer kill me i'm not gonna 
go through the chemo because the survival rate right. for certain things isn't very good. And even if you do survive, like you're in hell for a long time and you're the, you age rapidly and all that. If you get breast cancer, that's one thing, but you get some, some type of bone cancer, leukemia or multiple myeloma, that's, you know, you, you, in a lot of cases, like the outcome's not very good if you try to treat it. And, um, if I had been in issues, I probably wouldn't have treated it. I probably just would have, you know, let it take its course. Yeah. And it got to a point where I even told my mother, look, <clears throat> you know, he started getting dementia and that type of thing. And I said, look, if you want, I'll come pick him up and I'll take him on like a week long holiday. And then we'll just, I'll take him to a country that allows assisted suicide and we'll just take care of it, you know, because it got to a point where he didn't know who he was and this is, you know, and that type of thing. So yeah. it was rough, you know, but yeah. I uh, saw my grandmother go through it. I saw him go through it, and I'll probably go through it myself. Yeah. And, and I just totally spit on you. Sorry. It's fucking but, hot, uh, man. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, I've even told I've told Zoe, my fiance, I'm like, if that ever happens to me, just end it. And I don't want to. I don't want to put. I don't want to be a put people through that, and I don't want to go through it. You know. It's one of those tough things because you never know where you're going to be at that time in your life. Yeah. Because I know I've changed my mind so many times about things like that, and uh, but but back to this, like. You know, my dad always told me, and my dad just worked. My dad's Japanese, and like, yeah. actually, I did this. Uh, I was telling you, I did that uh, uh, sales thing with that dude, and he's from Mississippi, and he just kept calling me Oriental, which I was like, man, that's oh, so funny, because you, you don't hear that anymore. <laughs> yeah, because you know, at one point they were like, you can't say that. <laughs> that's the thing. Like my my father, my father was just a he was just a good old country redneck, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he didn't realize like. That's you don't you don't call an Asian an Oriental. Yeah. That's uh, like you that's uh, you call a rug I, Oriental. I don't get the the deal with it, but it's been explained to me many times. Yeah. My brother is a is a political science dude, and he's explained it. But when when we were kids, it was like Oriental or Asian. They were the same thing. Yeah, you know. But this guy he kept going, you know. Well, your father he's he's an Oriental, so he just works and yeah. work. And I'm like, yeah, he does. Yeah. He, he, but my dad told me once. He said, man, because I was always such a rough and tumble kid. Like I there were. I did anything that was not good was what I did. <laughs> so, yeah. So he was like, you know, it's to bury a child is you never want to do that. Yeah. I hope I die before you. And now that I have kids, I'm like, man, that would just be so tragic because your child, you see this potential. You see there's always something that is there. And uh, man, that's it's just got it. It's incomprehensible. And then people yeah. who do go through that, I'm like. I, uh, I can't even, I can't imagine because like Zoe and I, we're not having kids, right? I mean, yeah. we, we have a dog and Why we're getting more dogs. I, I don't know. We just, you have a dog and you travel this much. Yeah. I know you're a dog sucks. person. I yeah. know you're a dog yeah. person. I mean, our dream, our dream. And, uh, the reason we work really hard at building our business is we want to have a, like a animal farm at some point yeah. where we rescue animals and shit, you know? Yeah. So, um, no, nah, I don't know. Like, when I was in my late thirties, I was like, Oh, I got to get married. Got to have kids. And a friend of mine who was a psychologist, he said, listen, all guys go through this in the late twenties. If yes. you, if you can make it past 30, you will not give a fuck. <clears throat> and I go, huh? And sure as shit, I turned 30 and went, I could so care less. I have so many people who come to me in their 35 to 40. So I would actually say, if you make it to 40, you're yeah. good, which you're there. I'm there. So you're, you're, you're fine. Yeah. But there's so many guys that go into this place where there's two things because I get hired for this stuff and, yeah. and you get a 35 year old man. I can almost predict. It's like, well, do you have kids? I know what you're going to ask if he says no. If he says yes, not an issue for him. Yeah. And then it's like, if you ever when's the last time you had a long term relationship? If they say I haven't had one in a while, then they're hiring me because it's like, man, I should have kids and I can't have a relationship. And, you know, I, I can't make things work. And there's like all this weird pressure that comes on them. Yeah. But it's for real. If you get past it, yeah, you're cool. You're yeah. cool. Yeah. And the thing is, I it's in. This is a weird thing to admit to people. I'm a bit of a sociopath. Like I'm just like I can be just flat on things, and I don't have a whole lot of that paternal instinct. Like I, I, my paternal instinct really goes towards me being a dragon slayer in my industry, and like starting fights and trying to crusade against people who are talking junk science and being douche nozzles. You know? Dude, you're pretty cool. I mean, I'm not mm. on those boards, but like there are people that suck that are going after people online. I don't really see you doing that. Well, I don't, and I don't go after people online. I go after stupid shit they say. And 
you know, if somebody says, oh, blah, 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 and you're looking at it going, yeah, that's not what the research says. And then I go, well, actually, blah. then they go, why are you picking on me? Why are you bullying? I'm not. I'm just saying, if you don't <clears throat> want me to say shit, don't say dumb shit. And yeah. don't talk above your pay yeah. grade. There's a lot of stuff I don't talk right, about right, right. because I don't talk above my pay grade. I only talk about shit that I know about and everyone else should do the same fucking thing. And study shit until you know what you're talking about. Then talk about it. Then you don't have to worry about somebody else going, that's dumb. It's it's weird though because I've always been such an emotional guy. I'm not like a scientist or whatever. You know, I'm, I'm pretty adamant and passionate about the things that I do and that I do know. But I am one of those average people that talks about shit I don't know about and has an opinion. And nowadays you're like supposed to, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah. It's like, but here's the here's the difference though. Here's the difference. So if you were like, oh, I hear macaroni and cheese is a good carbohydrate. Well, you're not a you're also not an educator or a fitness professional. Yeah. So it doesn't fucking matter. But when you're on a platform where people are looking at you and you're saying blah 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 blah. And it's not true. You're perpetuating bullshit nonsense. And we got we have enough of that stuff of people like David Avocado Wolf and all these other fucking idiots, you know, all these and, and all these fucking celebrities, all these celebrities that are, you know, they have no science background. Yeah, they just say <clears throat> dumb shit. And I saw Kelly Ripa on the cover of like Woman's World the other day or something lose 22 pounds of weight in a week. It's like, what are you going to cut off a fucking leg like that's this is and this is the shit we deal with. But it's no different in my section of the industry where you have these people who are top-rated strength and conditioning coaches. And what they do is they basically, they'll read a chapter in someone's book, and then they'll basically copy and paste that stuff online. And then people go, oh, this guy knows what the fuck he's talking about. But then when you talk to him face-to-face, you go, wow, you're a fucking charlatan. You actually don't know what you're talking about. You're just a fucking fraud. You're just copying and pasting other people's shit. Like, that's, that's not right to me. I don't know. Yeah. I may just be being yeah. a dickhead, but no, that's if you're gonna be yeah. if you're gonna be a, try to be an expert, just yeah. be a fucking expert. You know, it's funny too because with me, it's all sex. Like I would, it's so weird, man. I try and make these videos that are like this, yeah, and people are like, Steve, just stick with sex, just stick with fucking. And I'm like, yeah, but then YouTube suppresses you and Facebook suppresses yeah. you. And I'm like, no, I can't. And yeah. plus, there's so many other things that I'm interested in, you know, that are beyond that. But there's so many people that talk about sex that are yeah. fucking idiots. Yeah. And I'm not like the intellectual type. So when I hear like, uh, um, this always gets me in trouble, but this is dude, Jordan Peterson. I met him. He says a lot of good yeah. stuff. Okay. When he talks about relationships and sex, he's fucking retarded. Okay. The thing is, is you can't learn just about relationships and sex when it, when you study stuff. You mean yeah, like, yeah. like women, it's like, oh, women are hypergamous, which means they marry up. And then it's like, okay, well, you see examples of that. But there's so, man, all the dudes that I know are really good with women don't have fucking money. And they like, and that might fit the bad boy template, but yeah. there, there's guys who like, oh man. You, uh, Bro, here, uh, here's uh, the thing. Here's the thing. And, and, I, and I am by no means an expert on sex anymore, believe me. And, you know, unless it's sex with, my, with myself. I mean, you're, you get, yeah, that's you the, know, hey, I get you get, you get married, you got, yeah, you got me, kids. I got a dog that's like a kid. We can't, we can't have sex yeah, without the yeah, dog yeah, wanting yeah. to be like in the bed with us, which you is don't not, do that? no, because is that I'm, illegal in Australia. Well, you know, it's that, that, that one time you get a cold nose in your butthole and it's like, then you lose your boner, you know? <laughs> So Dude, I got a story you know, about that. So, like, go <laughs> I got lots of them, but you know, I, I'm by no means an expert on sex anymore. If you had talked to me fucking in my twenties, we could have talked about this all the time. But when, when you look at like, well, how are you going to do a fucking randomized control trial with women? Women right. don't understand each other. Yeah. Women have, I have courses <clears throat> and they want to talk about women's hormones and how women feel. And I go, I'm not the person to talk about women's hormones. I talk about the mitochondria and insulin and hormones and weight loss and fat gain. And all. That's what I do. Don't talk to me about women because I don't fucking know. And nobody knows. Women don't even know. And all the girls in class are like, that's right. We have fucking no clue. And I'm like, do you, do you women understand each other? Like, no, no, I don't know why. So how are you going to do a, a, a whole controlled trial on what women fucking want? Yeah. You know what you know what they want? They want different shit. Yeah. And every woman wants something a little different. And like 
when Zoe and I met, I mean, look at me, I got a face for radio, right? It's like, she's, what did she see in me? Uh, we got, we get this, we have the same sense of humor. We both read a lot. We're both intellectuals and that's what, that's what attracted us, you know? Um, if she was looking for a fucking Tom Cruise lookalike and I'm not her guy, <laughs> but you know, there are girls are looking for that. So that was, you know, and, yeah. and for us, like we've, our relationship has never been about sex, like yeah. ever. It's always been about like, it's a whole, it, it, it's, if, if you want to say sex on a different level, like on a fucking spiritual type level, like we connect in that way that has nothing to do with anything physical. So how do you, how do you even have a discussion on sex and relationships and all that when there's side of you, right? Which is what you coach on, right? Right, right, right. You know? Yeah. And that, that you've got an endless plethora of things. Like with me, with my type of science, it, it is what it is. It's very black and white. When you start at, at putting biology with chemistry and then also emotional chemistry and things like that, man, that's a that's a huge fucking topic to talk talk about, you know? Yeah. Live. We are live. Woo! Woo. So, magic just happened. Um, what the fuck were you talking about? Uh, Sex coaches? Sex yeah sex oh sex. yeah you have a relationship where you're asexual <laughs> hey, what do you call it when you masturbate a lot unisexual dude i don't know but man i'm the best i've ever had i'm just gonna tell you that right now um no, nobody knows you like you you know fuck dude you know like and that's the thing is like people are afraid of masturbation now like there's the no fat movement well i you're, go you're, go I, for it. I think you're, you're, you're nowadays with all the social justice warriors. If you don't have your dick sign a contract saying it's okay for you to touch it, then you could be you could be in trouble because the SJWs will come in and and get you for not advising your dick on whether you should actually be touching it. Dude, I I, I really want to wonder like people who are overly politicized or like cult like into something. Yeah. That like, what's the demographic of people that are in the no fap, which is the like, I don't jerk off movement that are like that. And then also like dudes who, so guys like me, total misogynist to some degree. I mean, like, you know, there were times in my life, it was a big part of it. And there's a part of that that could be bad. There's a part of that that I think is great. That doesn't have to be this evil fucking thing, but to just give yourself to that lust and, or whatever the hell you want to call it. But that being said, how many of those people didn't have a good relationship with their mother? It's pretty high. But yeah. then you get like the ultra feminist side. How many of them didn't have a good relationship with their father or mother? But somebody told me this one thing. Everybody watching this is like, what the fuck, where the are, fuck you, are they going what are with you this? Talking about? Go back to Lone Star, <laughs> <laughs> which I think is the best Texas beer. I think Lone Star is the best. Oh, it's shit. That's but, why. But it's the National Beer of Texas. So I can get that out. motherfucker for one dollar, man. When I used to drink, it was one dollar, and I'd... I got I bought an eighteen pack the other day. I think it was twenty bucks. It's beautiful. It's fucking amazing. Dollar beer, a little over. But back to the topic, Steve. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Focus. Okay. Focus. Okay. Focus. Feminist. Misogynist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this guy made this point. He's like, I wonder how many people uh, that are super like politicized or whatever were raised or, or the, we're t uh, the men got it. See, I can't even follow myself yeah. here, but the guys who are really angry at women right now, which is a shit ton. There's like hateful towards women. How many of them were raised by a feminist mother? And mm. man, you just see this kind of like judgment to the, let's say when they're growing up and they're like, you know, your dad was just a piece of shit and da 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 da. da and they're talking shit to the kid all the time, yeah. which is a whole nother up which should never it. happen yeah, yeah one yeah. parent should never say that about the other and it's so tough because like you just god man nobody has a rule book on parenting we were talking about this with business nobody has a rule book on business no. and nobody has a rule book on parenting and there's definitely some best practice things that people should not yeah. do i mean babies should come with a, a user manual yeah. but the, the, you don't pop one out and then the doctor goes well, here, here you go here's uh raising babies for yeah. dumbasses you yeah know? so but man these people like you know, these guys that are really, really angry and then they'll come to my groups and like, Steve, tell us how to dominate and abuse women. And I'm like, man, <laughs> I'll tell you how to do that, but you can't be angry. You can't be <laughs> like, you got to solve this chip on your shoulder first. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Take the poison out or it's just going to fucking poison you. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of them have uh, had mothers that were just really, you know, ultra political and had all these heavy judgments against men and it kind of flipped. 
Yeah. You know, when the kids grew up. That's how I, that's how I grew up. That's how I grew up. My mom's oh, yeah. super hyper political, um, still to this day. And she's, she's one side of political. So she's way left. Like all she does, she sits around and watches MSNBC all day and CNN. And that's all she listens to. So she doesn't look at the other side of the coin or she doesn't look at something that's kind of in the middle. It's all one direction. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, it was always saying bad things about my father, you know. And then, you know, he said bad things about her So they were well. split. No, no, they were together. They were un unhappily married, I guess <laughs> I would say. So it was like one of those things where, you know, she would talk shit about him. He would talk shit about her. And I'm like, I don't really give a fuck. You, whatever problem you motherfuckers have between each other, I don't give a shit. Like, I don't want, you know, I got my own problem with both of you. So just, you know, everybody shut the fuck up. You know, it's one of those things. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I turned out all right. All right, all right, all right, all right you know? But, you know, it's it, it's weird because we're, we're in this day and age where, fuck, man. You know what the hardest thing to be right now is a fucking white American male. Dude, yeah, this is a, that, so, oh, man, so many people talk about this. So I have a very mixed culture group, but I'll, I have some friends. Actually, I have a female friend, super hardcore Trump supporter, like listens to like all the right wing radio, which I, I love right wing. I'm, I'm neither. And I'd definitely be more on the left side of but anything, you, but you gotta listen to both sides, oh, it's, but it's great. They're the yeah. most talented people on right wing radio. Yeah. I honestly think they're like geniuses and there's a whole bunch of them, but, but man, so I'll tell her, I'll be like, I'll be like, man, there is no buddy in the history of mankind that has been more suppressed and oppressed than the white American male. And she'll be like, no, you could totally, <laughs> but you're, you're spit it out, baby. It's, here's, here's the thing. Like, it, here's the thing. Like nowadays it's become this weird fucking thing. It's like you get just because you're white and you're male and you're American, you get put into this fucking classification of douchebags that you don't, I don't fucking look, I'm also fucking half Jewish. So like, don't put me in this. Was, was your mom Jewish? Uh, no, my my father's. No, you're not Jewish. Well, what? I can't. Yeah, of course. I'm thirty. 30 I've done a genetic testing. I'm thirty five percent Ashkenazi Jew. So wow. if you if you say I, wow. I got the genetic test to prove it. There you go. But what what I'm what I'm getting at with that is like you get pigeonholed because of the way yeah. you look, right? Yeah. And like I grew up in a in a, a town that was a poor country redneck town that was half white half black. Like I don't want to be put into this classification with everyone else where I'm automatically a racist, misogynistic fucking redneck because I'm a white dude from Texas. Like it, it, it's not to me, it's like, it's not fair that I have to, I have to go through that. Right. But it's not fair that a lot of people have to go through the shit that they go through. But again, I, we got to get to this point where we stop the letting the media tell us what we're supposed to believe. And we just need to be fucking human and talk to people and just fucking get along no matter what you're fucking opinion is about this or that like you know what i mean yeah no but see this is where i think the difference is because you're like like whatever man you i always think it's funny when they people when people say the uh, one of my other friends said to one of my black friends he said the most the most privileged man the white dude said to the black dude the most privileged man in america right now is the black male which pissed the black dude off. Anyway, when I see these people argue, they're not stating their opinion. They're fighting for something else, which is yeah. not what I see you doing. Yeah. Like, you just have this opinion. Here's the thing. <clears throat> that statement pisses me off, too. But it also pisses me off when they call every white male privileged. I grew up in a lower middle class. Right, right, well, yeah. You, you... We're, we're, my parents weren't <clears throat> rich. I, I've, I come yeah. from nothing. Like, I've built everything. Yeah. And, you know, being white was never enough. You know what was enough? I would fucking read a lot of books and I fucking researched and I found a passion and I went for it. And all of my black friends who did the same thing are just as successful. All of my Asian friends are more successful because that's the way Asians do things. That's, you know, all my female friends that did that. It, you, you have a choice, especially in America, to be as big and badass as you want to be if you fucking put the work in. And most people don't want to put the work in. Yeah. And that's what I've learned. Yeah. I've learned that living in other countries where the government gives too much support, right? You don't want to work? Fine. Fuck it. We'll pay for you to not work. 
You know, you don't want to take care of yourself. Cool. The government will pay for your health care. You don't want to do this. You, know, you want to get, make six figures doing some fuck all unskilled labor. They do that. OK, that's fine. Whatever. There's no incentive to actually work your ass off. In America, there's a lot of incentive. If you want to be somebody, work your fucking ass off. Because here, no one's going to give you that help. You either, yeah. you either do it yourself or you find somebody to help you do it and you yeah. fucking do it. But that's the thing. I hate all that privileged white guy, pr privileged black guy. How about we just look at people like, even if you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth, I have friends who were born into wealth. They're incredibly successful. And yes, they started out with mommy and daddy's money, but that's not enough for everybody. I've got friends who did, they were yeah. trust fund babies and they're oh, yeah. broke as fuck. Yeah. You know, yeah. you still have to put in the work to manage the money and manage the businesses and do all this stuff for yourself, you know. So it, it, it's time that people stop crying about where they were born into this life. Put on your big boy panties, put on your big girl panties and fucking work your ass off because there's no fucking excuse these days. You go to the goddamn library and get on the fucking Internet for free. OK, right. I just. I just came yeah. over here to do the interview from the Central Austin Library. You can walk in there and get your ass on a fucking computer and start researching and learn things and then go apply them. And you can be as big and bad as you want to be, but you got to put in the fucking work. No one else is going to do that shit for you. Man, there's a lot I want to say about this because it's, it's so important is that all these people bitching, all these people with a cause are not taking responsibility for themselves because no. they're fighting a cause. They got victim mentality. You can't you can't do anything about a cause. It's always going to be fucked. Yeah. Like it, it's crazy anyway. What's well, like, you know, it's like this like, you know, and I've got people in my family are like this. They they want to be uh, they want to be closet social justice wars where they sit on Facebook and they sign fucking electronic ah man. Electronic fucking yeah. what what uh, oh, you know, I, I mean, I'm going to get really fucking bet about this. It's like, <laughs> they, 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 like, you want to change the fucking world? Get out of your fucking house and you go do something about it. Instead of fucking signing fucking protests on your fucking computer. And I don't mean like putting on your Antifa fucking uh, hoodie and cover your face and throw Molotov cocktails at shit. I mean, go out and fucking do stuff and make an impact. <laughs> but people, that takes too much fucking work, doesn't it? You know, it's interesting because like I went, so I forget how old it was, like 26 or something. I was like in the whole punk rock scene. And so speaking of Asians that aren't, I'm half Asian, so I have a buy. But one of my favorite things always about Japan and Hawaii is you find like homeless Japanese people. It's it, like, because you don't see that in most places or you see, you know, just people that aren't doing so hot, you know, in society. That'd make a, that'd that, make a good fucking movie. Yeah, dude, man. Right. Uh, fucking... Anyway, but I was uh, I was playing in the punk scene and it was like, man, I, I've done some deplorable shit in my life, but there were people that just out. I Most of the time I'd step up like, you think you do fucked up shit? I'll fuck you up. Like the jackass guys, they yeah. all lived in Hawaii. No problem. I'll do something like, way more fucked up yeah. than you could. These dudes, man. Oh, they were just so fucking disgusting and fucked like in that scene. And just, you know, it was like a crazy joke. I'm surprised it came out of it alive, and now I just spit on you. But um, we both got hard. <laughs> so, <laughs> so basically, uh, um, God, see, I can't think, man. This is this is a problem. I yeah. need to change my diet, Luke. Yeah, you do. But uh, <laughs> like, uh, it's the fucking. You soda. drink the vanilla cream I, soda I gave I you. Did man it has aspartame in it? No. Well, that's that's what's gonna do it, man. That's, that's what's gonna push me over that's the over edge. Over your edge, the goddamn aspartame. <laughs> um. <laughs> So anyway, like I would just go and do these these crazy chaotic things and be like just fucking nuts. But the coolest part about this was is when I first moved to Fort Worth, I stayed in a squat. Okay, most people don't know what that is, yeah. but if there's like a little N and a circle around it with some arrows, that means that it's an abandoned house or whatever, and you stay in it and you just freeload, right? Yeah. There were like ten people that lived there, and I was just passing through. Now, I was of the, the I, it was kind of split. There were like six of them that threw Mol Mol Molotov cocktails and, you know, defaced things and broke things and fucked shit up. Anarchy, I, but doing I it wrong. I went with them. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's who I went with, right? And then there were these other people, there were like four that were like, no, we're going we're gonna to start a restaurant. We're going to do the right thing. 
dude, fast forward 15 years later or 14 years later, whatever it is. And like a lot of the people on the chain yourself to a construction site or blow stuff up, they're dead. I made it out alive and, um, you know, live off of like stealing from people and fucking them up or whatever. And like Richard, no consequence. So it's a corporation. Yeah. We can do whatever, all that sort of stuff, which is where yeah. I went. And these other people started a restaurant in Fort Worth. It's a vegan restaurant. It's awesome, man. Or some people, whenever I recommend people do it, they're like, no, I'm never going there. But I love it. And I love yeah. seeing those people. And I remember when I stopped drinking, all of my friends left me. So it's like a battle. You know, it's been like 10 years for me. But this was like four, 13 or 14 years ago when I really tried to stop. And they were like, the, the vegan ones were like, Steve, this is like, this is good. Like, yeah. go with this, please. And they're great people because they, we all stayed in a house together. You know, we were all part of like, you know, this like, fuck, the world's fucked up. Like, here's how the world's fucked up. But all those motherfuckers did something about it. And they're great people. They became better people for yeah. it. And whatever your stance is on like, you know, veganism or whatever, I always saw them as an example of like, you went for what you believed in. And that, it, we're talking about Cowtown, man. Fort Worth, Texas. This place is packed. You walk in there, packed. Packed. Always yeah. with with meat eaters, yeah, and because they like it, because yeah. it's cool. And one of the things about it is, is you can't say anything, or it used to be. I don't know if it's still this way, but I think it is. You can't state your political shit to the clients. You can have like posters up or whatever, but you can't, you know, preach your your shit. Yeah, you know, cut that out. Let's do the action. Let's do something. And to see these people move on to filmmakers and artists and just progress in their lives. It was so cool. But man, I, the one thing that I remember is I remember I stopped drinking, stopped doing drugs. It was really tough because I like, you know, didn't want to go and do some 12 step thing. And then eventually I did. But there was like two years where I just kept bouncing back and forth. And they were like, look, man, you're a good dude. Don't be fucked up. And at the time, you don't see, you know, that everybody else around you is near death. Yeah. You know, five years later, yeah. they start popping off and shit. <laughs> But yeah, man, it, it's just always something I think about is that standard. These guys didn't talk shit. They did something and they became successful yeah. and are much happier human beings. And they live. They live the ideal. Yeah. What I realized, I didn't fucking care about it. I just want to do what I wanted, you know, not have consequence. It, it's, it's funny because like all the people that like in my 20s, I was, you know, fuck, you name it, we did it, yeah. whatever. And it's funny because... All of us, and I was never in that situation where, I mean, there were times, yeah, there were times where I was homeless, but it wasn't like what you're talking about. It was like, maybe I lived in my car for a couple of weeks or I had to couch surf or whatever, you know, that type hey, of thing. Hey, a lot of people know? haven't done that. Though. That type of stuff. And, 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 you know, it surprises people when I tell them that, you know, and like you're fucking parking your car in weird places so that it doesn't come get repoed. I've been, yeah. I've been through all that. Yeah. Right. And it was because of poor money management and, you know trying to hustle and that type of thing and and but a lot of the people that i used to go out and to raves and i used to go out to clubs and we used to do like we were fucking making and selling drugs and like fuck we used to do we used to go to fucking mexico and bring back cocaine and marijuana yeah. and pills and we were making ghb and we were doing all this stuff and it's crazy because most of the guys that i did that with once they stopped now they're all hugely highly successful and I think part of it, yes. part of it is because they're massive risk takers and to make businesses work and to make, to be successful, you have to be willing to take crazy risks and you have to be willing to know that if this doesn't turn out, I'm back at, at the bottom and then I have to take another risk. And that's the thing. Like the majority of the people that I know that are hugely successful have failed way more, way more than they've succeeded but they got back up and they kept going no matter yeah. how fucking much it hurt. And yeah. no matter how, man, I've been at the fucking bottom more times than I can fucking count. <laughs> and I just refused to stop. And I saw it, Zoe, Zoe, she tells me, she goes, you were the most relentless, stubborn motherfucker I've ever met. I even got it tattooed on my chest, relentless. Have you read the book? I won't stop. Which book? It's by Tim Glover. He trained the... The uh, like Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, all these guys. Oh, but no, he, I gotta he, read that. Yeah, yeah. But you'd love it. Yeah. But that's the thing. Like, man, if you want success, you just you have to be willing to fucking put yourself out there, face humiliation, face rejection, and fall down, and just get the fuck back up, and just keep going. And all those guys that that I used to do that crazy shit with, 
they were all adrenaline junkies, risk takers, and all yeah. that. And once they broke out of that stuff, now they're all it's the crazy the stuff that they've actually done. And a, a lot of the guys are just they're almost like fuck these guys are like genius status. And it seems that those are the type of people that really progress to doing drugs because they get fucking bored with life. You know, drug addicts are the best in a lot of ways. Remember when we were talking about bargaining? You get a lot of people like me. We're like, oh yeah, I'll do it, and then it's like, oh. yeah, but. So I deal with a lot of like entrepreneurs that are like, they're all right. You know, they'll talk business. You deal with a high level entrepreneur, they're fucking badass. If you ever get a client that, and I'm sure you've had one, that is a fucking drug dealer on a high level, best. Best client, best at taking advice, like transactions flawless. There's no yeah. bullshit ever. Yeah. Like they are the best with money and the best vision for business. And I think one of the reasons for that is because they've seen supply and demand at such a crazy level. I mean, yeah. The reason why drugs are there is because they're popular, right? And so you, you have to be in business to get business. And when you see that happening, it's key. But then there's the whole secret side where you have to be all internal because you can't, you can't like, you can't fuck up. Yeah. You know, you go to prison. You fuck up, you're done. Dude, th those guys are just the best to work yeah. with. Fucking my favorite. Better than a, up, 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 entrepreneur. No, like I, I remember. I mean, this was. Oh God, I, I'm not gonna say the person's name. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. in Austin, it, people would know who this person was. But um, I remember, like, this is the guys to get cocaine from, right? And mm. so you would text the guy, and you would make an appointment, and you would go to his apartment, and he was just all he was all business, like, but you do the transaction, but then he'd also be like, "So how you doing, man?" And he'd like have like regular conversation with you and you're like okay this is kind of cool and like he knew like things about you and like cared about you and i was like oh what this is pretty good service yeah. for a coke yeah. dealer yeah but he was like it was always like yeah come over at this time this is bring this do this and you would walk over and it would just be like really smooth and it was always very efficient very business-like it wasn't like you know, one of those shady deals on the fucking corner yeah. type of thing. Man, it's it's crazy because people ask me, like, what makes a good drug dealer? And it's like, man, give service. Yeah. Because there's so many drug dealers that don't learn how to do that. And if they did, it would just... If you got more Apple and less, like, Fry's Electronics, yeah, you would get a better clientele with, yeah. you know... And uh, you see, like, like Zoe's all into... Uh, uh, what's his face? Yeah. Um, Famous drug dealer, Colombian drug dealer. Uh, Pablo Escobar? Uh, uh, yeah. So she's like fucking like, she's obsessed reading every single book by him and like, like how he did business and that. And, and you know, obviously like cutting people's heads off. We'll, we'll take that, that. helps. We'll take that type of stuff out yeah. of it. But just, you know, the way he ran the, the business. And, yeah. and I actually, I, I bought a book. I'll have to remember what it was called, but it's basically a book on how like high level drug dealers run their business and what other businesses can learn from them Man, i think a ton i just haven't yeah. i haven't read it yet but this is such a weird conversation to be having like people but are it's gonna, true but people are gonna listen to this people that that were never in that scene and they're gonna listen to this and be like what the fuck are they talking about but dude if you know you know it is the best stuff because those people they're just smarter man i was talking to a guy that just uh he muled weed around he had drop houses and all this sort of stuff i mean trafficking marijuana even if it was 10 years ago, is much different than trafficking cocaine. The consequences aren't nearly as big, but like, this guy was so smart about it. And I'm like, how did you fucking think of all that shit? And he was like, yeah. I was never worried about ca getting caught because I couldn't. Or, you know, like, obviously if somebody really microscoped his life, but he was like, man, I just knew the right balance of being secretive about these things, being plain in plain sight about these things. And yeah. when he broke it all down, it was like amazing. And when you get guys transition into business like that, it's better than any business yeah. book. They're just, they're fucking amazing. You know what's crazy about it? The majority of the guys that we're talking about are incredibly uneducated in yeah. a traditional formal yes. sense. Yeah. They didn't finish high school or they right. did very poorly, got a GED or whatever. But they they created yeah big huge drug and they businesses. were passionate about it yeah I mean like they loved it because you could love it because you get that pump and all this sort of stuff yeah but also they had the they had something that you could sell yeah and when you see that there's this there's this book by Jack London called the Sea Wolf and this dude says he's like talking about humanity the Sea Wolf captain talking to this 
the other dude who's kind of stuck on the boat. And he says, life is simple, man. It's not all this shit. It's, uh, I'm terribly misquoting this, but wherever <laughs> life can happen, it will happen. Yeah. And it's just going to happen how it happens. Yeah. This algae or these fish grow here and they kill off the other fish. But whatever lives, lives, and that's what happens. Economy put out this thing called drugs. And there's some special people, some truly genius people that come out of a demographic that just kill it. They fucking are amazing mm. at business. And, it's, and they do everything <clears throat> right. And they make it work in that page and you know what i'm not like i know a lot of this stuff i'm just not that guy it's very hard to do in my business yeah. but you see you know that that life is pumped in like oh well you sell this it's gonna work people yeah. want cocaine or marijuana or whatever the fuck it is and it motivates them and then they take that extra step to make it nicer and better and build relationships yeah. and then all of a sudden when you get that guy that has you know, a gram for 80 bucks and you're normally buying it for 110, you'll go with the 110 guy because you know it's safe, you know it's good, you know exactly what you're, how many times, I mean, I don't know, with said how, person, how, maybe. How, the, how many times did you do a line and immediately have to go take a shit because it was cut with like fucking baby lax or something? <laughs> and you're like, well, I just paid 50, I've just paid 50, 50 bucks a gram. Or, or you know, you, you spend a, spend a, <laughs> Like a hundred and hundred and ten hundred and twenty on an eight ball, and now every time you take a fucking snort, you gotta take a shit, you know, yeah, yeah. which is not gonna work really yeah. well when you're yeah. you're downtown, you know, <laughs> and you got dirty bathrooms. But <laughs> not that but, that's ever happened to but me. That's an ex excellent excellent example yeah. of why you go to the guy who you trust, who yeah. does all the right things, and you'll pay whatever price, you know, within whatever reason. That's some smart. That's some smart shit. Go, 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 go. Okay. All right. So, yeah, we took a short break because... Because um, uh, yeah, you don't whatever. know how to don't manage know how to your equipment. I don't know how to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I forgot to change the framing. Holy shit. Oh, Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, all right. Well, whatever. Uh, um, so, the but the crazy thing about this is, is that now this is where I have to have talent. I want to go back yeah. to the dog licking the balls while oh, you're having yeah, sex. Yeah. I want to go back to... Yeah. Uh, more okay. drug dealer talk. I want like, yeah. but dude, we got to get to the fitness shit. We got to go. We got to, how to, how does Steve live? Or uh, jujitsu? Well, oh yeah, we could talk about both. Jujitsu and fitness. Jujitsu. How the fuck do I not wreck my body? My knees are so jacked. Like it, I probably have to have surgery on this one. I've had two surgeries on this one before jujitsu. Yep. Um, and I don't want to have to do surgery and all that shit, but Everything Look, hurts. Here's the thing. Like, here's what people need to understand. The majority of your knee issues is something that starts in the hip. Okay. Yeah. So that's the main thing is, it, are your hip, are your hips working correctly, right? Are the, the femurs, the bones that fit into the hip joint, are they moving correctly? And a lot of people, because people sit down a lot, right? People sit down and certain muscles get really short and weak. And then you build up scar tissue and things like that. And, and bones don't move the way they're supposed to. So. Right. One of the first things is getting in to see somebody that can actually get their hands on you and say, okay, all right, this is, there's some gunk in here we need to get rid of and we need to move to get this. Can you do that without surgery? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. I do it. I do it all because I've gotten into the therapy side of things. Right. And, you know, one of the, one of the biggest offenders that I find is that people's their that leg bone, that thigh bone, the femur, it, it's too jammed into the joint, Right. And so when it gets jammed into the joint, you build up, up a lot of scar tissue because the body is looking for stability and it'll do anything it can for stability. So whenever you get like tight muscles, like when you look at people with, you know, they bench press a lot and they've got that kind of forward. Yeah. Oh, like, totally. You know, like yeah. this. What is it? And then they get a lot of pain here and they get a lot of scar tissue built up. Well, that scar tissue is building up because it's trying to keep this, the upper arm bone in the socket. And if it doesn't create what's called they you get get what's called hypoxic tissue where it doesn't get a lot of oxygen you build up a lot of scar tissue and fibrotic tissue and it's creating a basket to hold that joint together right and it usually stems from having a really weak upper back and really weak scapula not working all that stuff you're doing too much bench pressing not enough pulling and that type of stuff but when you look at the hips you have people that sit down a lot the same thing happens and so let's say you try to go down into a squat 
when you go into a squat, the bone can't move the way it's supposed to, so it slams into the joint, which causes labral issues and acetabulum issues and things like that. You can get people that'll go in there and, you know, they that's what they do. They go in there and they will break up some of that tissue. You have tools, you have Graston tools and Gua Sha, and there's all sorts of stuff you can do to break that stuff up. And yeah, it fucking hurts, but it's better than getting surgery. Now, surgery for some people might be inevitable because of long-term issues. Yeah. Your body will compensate until it can't compensate anymore. And when it can't compensate, that's when you get chronic pain. And then you're like, you go in, they say, okay, we have to go in there and do some type of keyhole surgery or whatever. But if you're walking on it now without pain, if you can squat body weight without pain, if you can do a lunge without pain, you're probably okay. You probably just need to go in and have somebody start working on that. So like fascial stretch technique, um, which is one of the things that I do that I like. <coughs> That's um, Chris and Ann Frederick from Stretch to Win. If you can find an FST person, that's good. If you can find somebody that does soft tissue work and things like Gua Sha or Graston and ART, that's also good. I, I've got a guy here that you should probably go see is uh, Dr. Ross Bomben, who is a, is a sports chiropractor, but he also does ART. And that's the guy I send everybody to in Austin because... He deals with all the guys on the University of Texas football team. Right, 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 yeah. And it's funny because yeah. he, when I used to go in and see him, like, I heard about him because I knew the the head strength coach for um, for University of Texas years and years ago. And he was like, he recommended him. So I started sending uh, clients to him. And then one day he calls me, he's like, who are you? Like, you're sending me all these people. I need, can you come in and meet me? So I went in to meet him. He was like, I'm going to go ahead and treat you because you're like, you've basically doubled my business. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. And he was fantastic. Like the, the way he does things is the way it should be done. Yeah. He doesn't crack you or pop you like most chiropractors. He just gets in and finds a root cause and then gives you all the stuff you need to do. Um, but you, a lot of that stuff can be avoided using corrective exercise and using physiotherapy massage and stretching if it's the right type of stretching and things like that so so i have pain in my knee when i do those things but i still train and i train like heel hooks and all that shit so I yeah get, i'm retarded right but you know so many people that do that that are yeah that are dumb Fuck like i that. do that all the time <laughs> <laughs> but i need to see your dude yeah. because surgery sucks and i probably have to have it um, but you know, any, anyway, let's get to this. How does the average guy, what's the best thing that they can do to get healthy? Cause that, I mean, that's my question. I'm not, I'm not like my brother. If my yeah. brother worked with you, you'd love it. Cause he'd just do whatever. Yeah. Like he'd be like an animal, man. That's not me. Or like I work out and on it, which I don't know what opinions you have yeah. on that, but there's so many pro athletes that are there just killing it, which is cool to work with them. But I'm like, ah, that's not. But you're not a pro athlete, yeah. And no, you have yeah. you have other things that are more oh, yeah. more important yeah. to you, yeah. than working out, yeah. Right. So so how do you deal with general population that th their life doesn't revolve around fucking eating, training, and pooping, right? Because <laughs> if you look at the majority of the industry, well, if you look at the majority of the industry, it's a lot of <clears throat> it's a lot of young twenty something year olds. Yeah, they probably still live with their mommy and daddy. Um, all they do is train and fucking shit and sleep all day. And yeah. they're what they want out of their life is completely different. Then you look at guys like us and I'm 40 and you're almost 40. I'm like, 40. I'm almost you are 41. 40. Yeah. You're almost 41. Yeah. So you're older yeah. than me. Shit. You're old. Dude. So, so much change. Fuck. Stuff started to change at 37. But when yeah. I hit 40, it was like this flip got, yeah. or the switch got flipped. It was at, crazy. at 35, I went. You know what? Like I, I did my last show, I think at thirty five or thirty six, and I kind of went, yeah, I'm just a totally. Di I don't identify with that anymore. Like, I don't really give a shit. Like, I want to. There's other things I want to do other than just fucking looking good naked. That's all right. Yeah. It's whatever. Um, and so when you look at general population, you gotta look at you gotta look at these guys and say, okay, what is it they really want? They want to. They want to have. They want to be pain free. They want to be able to do shit with their kids you know, and keep up with things. They want to, they want to be active. They want to, most people want to take a proper shit because most people don't crap correctly. They're either got diarrhea or constipation, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm, I love shitting. I, like, I don't know what I love more eating or shitting, but I shit just fine. I mean, I, I like to 
eating shit at the same time. You know? <laughs> I so I'll just eat a fucking sandwich while I'm taking a poop. You know, yeah, <laughs> stuff comes in, stuff comes out. It's a natural order yeah, of yeah. things, right? But you know, people don't want they don't want mood swings. They want to have yeah. lots of energy. They want this is the stuff that's important to general population. Big time. Big time. And they don't want it to feel like a second job. So when you when I when I have to sit down with it, somebody in the general population, I'm like, what do you do? Okay, it has to be simple. Like I need you to eat a little bit of protein with every meal. I need you to eat some fiber. I need you to eat lots of veggies. I need you to eat lots of fruit. I need you to drink enough water. Like people don't get enough fluids. And it's ridiculous because when I teach personal trainers, a lot of what I teach them is based on the fact that I coach mainly post personal trainers. Like most of the people that we write that we actually do personal training for online are other coaches. And you get people that are training two hours a day and they've got migraines and they can't figure out why they've got migraines. And then you look at their check-in sheet and they're drinking 500 milliliters of water a day, which is nothing, right? Yeah. You tell them to drink three liters of water and now all of a sudden, magically, their migraines go away. Yeah. So most of the recommendations I give and I teach is based on the fact that personal trainers are fucking this stuff up. So imagine what general population is doing. So if you're dealing with, with Susie Muffin Top or whoever, you have to make things really simple and you have to like guide them over time and you got to play the long game because they're not people that are going to be really suited for really fast, rapid types of uh, information or transformations. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's crazy because you, when you said all of that, that's like, that's me. Like, I want to have, I want to be able to think out, like, what can I do to keep my brain going? What can I do to make me, you know, less stressed, less dramatic, less like, like emotional stuff that comes into it? Cause I know, man, I don't sleep. I think I'm fine, but I'm not fine. I'm like more people are telling me I'm pissed off. I have way higher anxiety, all this sort of stuff, stuff, which helped in my twenties. Like, or when I first started out, like with this business, you need to hustle, but man, that's not how you do something well. So, and the other thing too is like high blood pressure, which you told me to read mm. a book that was like everything you need to know about hypertension. And I read it and I did some of the stuff, probably not all of it, but I need something that I can do, you know? And there's so much that's based off of diet that's based yeah. off of neurosis. Like real, real quick. And I, I, I saved this because one time you're like, you want to be in ketosis? Do this. And I screenshotted it. <laughs> but, but seriously, I did keto or paleo or something like that for years and I got ripped at one point right away in like 2012 but I was doing it wrong and it didn't happen until maybe last year did I realize what keto acidosis was mm. like I didn't eat vegetables I didn't eat like all the good for you stuff yeah and so now and after I attempted to go vegan which I like I said I, I told you off the air I probably did it wrong man eating seven to ten cups of veggies like greens and what and fruit it's, not it's giving hard, a eh? shit. Oh man, it changed my life. Yeah. So yesterday I ate probably seven cups of vegetables and then a pizza and two bags of popcorn. What do you think is the problem there? But, but <laughs> hey, but you got the veggies, so it's Dude, all right. Like, look. It helps so much. But here's the thing. At the end of the day, most people eat in a very hedonistic way, right? Yeah. People aren't hungry. Like there are people that are, are legit starving, right? The people listening to this and watching this, that's probably not you, right? So people don't understand what real hunger and starvation really is. People eat out of boredom or yeah. they're low in fluids or thirsty or just because they're trying to fill some fucking hole in their heart because somebody touched them in their naughty place at some point. Whatever the fuck your problem is, most of us are eating at a very hedonistic. I mean, I'm fucking drinking a fucking Lone Star beer here, you know? So... Most of us do a lot of hedonistic things, and that's where the problem comes. And the thing is, a lot of people aren't managing stress well. And when you don't manage stress well, and you go into a fight or flight type of situation, your thinking brain turns off, your limbic system comes up, and you start emotional eating, and you start hedonistic eating to try to calm yourself down. That's where most people's problem is, right? That's where most people's overeating is. And if you're if you trying to lose weight, trying to get fit, and you can't do it, you're probably just fucking overeating. And you're probably eating a lot of things out of pleasure and not out of true need to eat those things. And that's that's not a bad thing. Eating for pleasure is great. 
But if you're going to eat for pleasure, you also have to understand that calories make a difference and you have to make sure you're eating things that are going to counterbalance that. So you, you ate seven cups of veggies yeah. and then you had some pizza. Cool. But if you hadn't had those seven cups of veggies, you probably would have eaten two fucking pizzas. Or you were probably yeah. eating fucking two pints of haagen ice cream. Actually, I lost so much weight just integrating vegetables because yeah. you, you're full. Yeah. Um, you, you get hungry really quick because like, you burn through it, or that's how I feel. But, like, man, the, one of the things that I thought was so dumb about me with keto was I didn't eat fruit and I didn't eat enough veggies. And, and there's a lot of great things. Like, I felt good mentally on keto. Yeah. I felt like, like, you know, I felt I, I didn't have a need for nutrients. I felt, like, good. Yeah. But then after like three months, like clockwork, man, I didn't feel good. I, well, I really keto, needed... look, keto can be a great, great style of eating for a lot of people. It just has a very low level of compliancy. It's very difficult to do long term, right? And it's very difficult to do if you're really active, right? If you are into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, if you're doing triathlons, if you're doing bodybuilding, it's not something that's going to help boost your performance long term unless you're doing something like an ultra marathon, which most of us aren't mm. are going out and running mm. 100 kilometers, right? But, you know, when you look at long term data, carbs over the course of the long game actually do better. So one of the things I tell people is, look, if you if you if you feel better doing keto, great. But just understand it's going to fuck your performance up and it's probably not the best choice long term unless you just really enjoy that style of eating and you feel that it works the best for you. For most people, actually eating carbs is a better it has a better return on your investment as long as you're matching the calories and as long as you're doing things that are going to use the carbs up. If you're just sitting on the couch watching TV every day, you probably don't need a lot of carbohydrates and ketogenic dieting is perfect for you. But the minute you start needing performance, and it, it's not a very good, it's not a very good um, uh, choice, you know. Dude, but, how does one remain healthy? <laughs> number one, I, I think everybody should take a multivitamin, multimineral, like everybody, right? The one we use is Thorn Basic Detox Nutrients. You see it over there on the counter there. <coughs> um, it's a very high powered one, uh, very good, high quality. I think everybody should take a phytonutrient blend. Which so if you're taking a multivitamin and multimineral, especially a high powered one, they're gonna they're going to make that in a lab off of like a yeast culture or what whatever they're making it off of. It's a synthetic, right? What you're not getting is the eight thousand chemicals out of fruits and veggies and foods that we don't have names for. We don't know what the fuck they do. We just know they make the vitamins work. Right. So we I typically will recommend ATP Science. It's a an Australian company. They have got a, uh, a product called Multi Food, which is, is it's labeled as a multivitamin. It's a terrible multivitamin, but it's an excellent phytonutrient blend. Hmm. Then, I think if you don't eat a lot of seafood, you've got to take three or four grams of fish oil a day. Okay. Now, if you're eating shrimp, prawns, if you're having you know salmon, all that you probably don't need that. But there's there's no reason not to take two, three, four grams of fish oil. I think everybody should take a teaspoonful of creatine every day. And I think if you can do take those four things, maybe a little bit of extra magnesium, maybe a little zinc if you need it. But other than that, I think you're pretty sweet. You do that, eat your fruits and veggies, make sure you're eating enough protein, but not going cray cray, right? So, you know, if you look at how much, what's a good protein recommendation, you don't really see negative effects until you get below one gram per kilogram. I think the optimal is about 1.8 to 2 grams per kilogram. I think you can go up to around 3.3. I think getting above that's probably going a little bit out of control. Like there's no really detrimental effects except you're making basically eating very expensive energy, right? They've shown Jose Antonio at the ISSN has shown um, intakes up to 6 grams per kilogram, which is a lot of protein to have no negative side effects if you don't have kidney issues, except that people can't be compliant. It's one of those things where it's like, oh, I can eat a lot of steak. Cool. Yeah. Then yeah. you start eating 600 yeah. fucking grams yeah. of protein. Yeah. That's like that's six <laughs> pounds of steak a day. It, it sounds fun until you actually try to do it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I have guys that, that eat 12, 1,250 grams of carbohydrates a day. And it sounds really fun until you do it for a few weeks. And it's like, oh my God, I'm so sick of eating fucking carbs. <laughs> So you keep your shit balanced. Make sure you're matching your calories to your activity. Get enough fucking sleep. But people are so sleep deprived. Oh, now. yeah. 
That's they're my problem. so, and you know what? People go, well, I can't sleep. You know what I say? Practice sleeping. Practice sleeping. If you have an issue and you keep getting up during the night, if you have the opportunity, go to bed as early as you can so that you can try to get into more, um, more sleep cycles, right? If you got kids, the easiest thing to do is give them a little Benadryl and bourbon. That puts them out pretty good. That way you get some sleep. Don't don't actually do that. Yeah, that's Benadryl, <laughs> Benadryl, bourbon, and Ambien. That'll, that'll that'll keep your kid asleep. You know, but you know, taking naps. If you got kids, try to take naps. You know, eat, chew your fucking food. Eat like an adult. Eat like an adult. Chew your food. And that's one of the things. Like when I have people that talk about having Dude, gut yeah. issues. Most of them don't fucking chew their food. They eat like a fucking snake. They unhinge their jaw and they just deep throat it. If you just chew your fucking food, all your digestive shit would probably go away. Yeah. Right. So, there's, yeah. man, there's so many tips I can give you, but most of them are just common sense shit. You know, if you follow us at musclenerds.net on Facebook, you know, musclenerds underscore health on Instagram, we give a lot of free information. Um, and it's just most of the time I'm actually like writing content. I'm going, this is so fucking stupid. Like, I feel the same way about the stuff yeah, that I. People should know about. this. Like, this yeah, is common yeah. sense, but common sense isn't common, yeah. and people do dumb shit to yeah. themselves. So yeah, in terms of exercise, what should people be doing? Like the your exercise. Okay, so you know I'm a, I'm a weightlifter by trade. I love lifting weights. Yeah. I don't do it that much anymore. I do a lot of gymnastics stuff and. Yeah jiu-jitsu and things like that because, dude your grip strength with jiu-jitsu must be oh, insane dude your your hands are fucking gnarly crippled the first few weeks you do fucking jiu-jitsu oh, no they're they remain crippled dude they, they yeah. yeah well yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you you're in this you look like you've got like lobster hands all the, <laughs> all the fucking time you're just ah oh. but you know i i think i i was at a seminar a symposium with Dr. Robert Sapolsky, which is one of the like the one of the original gangsters of stress response, right? And and there were three hundred meatheads there, and you know he's he, somebody asked him, you know, well, okay, Dr. Sapolsky, when you look at exercise as being a stress reliever, in your opinion, what's the best form of exercise? And so you know they're all going to think he's going to say lifting weights, and he what he said, he looked at us and he goes, I think people should do the exercise they enjoy doing. And that's gotten me over the last, that was in 2013, and that kind of changed the way I view exercise. And I'm like, fuck, man, if, if, if you like to walk, go walk. Go do geocaching like we were talking about earlier. If you like to fucking do Zumba, do Zumba. Don't let anybody tell you that your form of exercise is inferior or stupid. You do whatever the fuck you enjoy doing because if you don't like to squat, that's the worst fucking exercise yeah. for you. Like, I don't even like squatting anymore because it doesn't feel good to me. I like to split squat or do lunges, and I like to do things, other things, you know? If you want to fucking do upside-down BOSU ball squats, more power to you. If you find joy in that and you find that you can do it safely and it's useful, then fucking do it. And don't let any dumb fuck douche nozzle tell you that you're doing something stupid, right? Because the, the fact of the matter is we have an obesity epidemic and most people just need to get out and fucking move more. And it doesn't matter what the fuck they do. They just need to get their fucking bodies in motion. Because at the end of the day, that's all the body craves. That being said, well, first off, that being said, so I'm good with just jujitsu because I don't <laughs> do anything else, man. I, I, I don't care if you need, if you can, look, if you can, if you can fap it fast enough to get your heart yes. rate to 130, 150 beats per minute for 30 minutes, you're pretty good. Now I got about ten seconds in me. So, <laughs> what if you have a dog? <laughs> well, then you're gonna go through a lot of peanut butter. I tell you that. <laughs> and my friend told me that. <laughs> Dude, but uh, you know what's funny? So I would not consider myself strong, but I was with a wrestler today. Like I, I wrestled, then I did jujitsu, put two hours on the mat. And dude, during wrestling, I was dead. And then as soon as we got to jujitsu, I'm like, all right, I can lie down. You know, I yeah, can lie yeah. down. And I just I'm lie on my back. But the wrestler was like, man, you have that caveman strength. I'm like, what the fuck? And this guy was strong, dude. Yeah. This guy was a motherfucker. I mean, he was badass, explosive. I'm going all slow and, you know, whatever. And, and I was like, what, what are you talking about? He's like, oh, no, man, no. And I think it just comes from mat time and those isometric you know this is the thing when you when you when you look at grappling sports and you look at wrestling and you look at judo and you look at jujitsu it builds a, a weird strength because it, it builds strength from all angles like yeah. it doesn't matter what position yeah. you're in you're really fucking yeah. strong 
when you just lift weights, you're building muscle, you're building specific strength and specific ranges of motion and specific angles, right? So like I remember two years ago, and I have not done judo in 25 years, right? I was in um, I was in Ireland, and my friend Leo is a uh, black belt in judo, and we were talking about it. We're like, oh, let's do some randori. We'll go and we'll you know throw each other around and shit like that. This dude is half my size, and he just fucking yeah. humiliated it's me. It's crazy when that stuff happens. Like, man. he yeah. would get his hand on you, and you could not get his, your, his hand off your hand or your wrist or your, your kimono or anything. Like, and then he would just sidestep and just slam your face in the ground. And this went on for like 90 minutes. Now, <laughs> now <coughs> with Brazilian jiu-jitsu, I'm okay because I understand leverage, and I understand how to continuously start working but a choke. But you did judo for a long time, right? A few years, but I was a kid. And I did jujitsu, but it was small circle jujitsu. So it was it was what Brazilian yeah. jujitsu was founded yeah. on. So it's very different. You don't really do a lot of groundwork. You try to stay in a standing position, right? So, but I understand the leverages and I understand the mechanics of it. So when I do Brazilian jujitsu, it's okay because like the last class I did, I was I was rolling with some blue belts and some purples, and they couldn't submit me, and they were like, "Oh God." You're so fucking strong, dude. And but the thing is, the only thing the, the strength only helps if you know how not to put an arm out there. Yeah, yeah. Or if if when they're working a choke, you understand, okay, my best defense here is to wrap my head around their neck, grab their lapel and then go fuck he's working a choke it, or pushing their hands off of you. If if I hadn't known that, th- these guys would have fucking choked me out like that. Yeah. So strength helps to a certain point, but you still have to understand the mechanics of the game and that type of thing. And I, I don't remember what we were talking about. Whatever. Yeah, no, you'd <laughs> exercise, but you'd kill me. But if I saw you walk into a gym, I'm like, man, I'm just going to defend until he gets tired. Because strong guys yeah. don't have the endurance usually. So. Well, the problem with strong guys is they use their strength. And that's the, that's the mistake. Right, 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 right. But that's also, yeah. a, that's also a benefit for me because when I show up to a class and nobody knows me and I don't tell them about my background... Right. They assume that because I'm big, I'm going to try to overpower yep. them, but I don't. I keep, right. I keep my hands close. I stay in the right positions, and I patiently work my way around until you fuck up. <laughs> I don't try to force the choke. I don't try to force anything. And that a lot of the times when I show up to a class, I go, okay, now listen, you're a big guy. You can't just use your, you just can't use strength. You're going to wear yourself out. And I'm like, okay. And I just play dumb. And then I get them on the ground and I get in a side mount and I just lay there and I sprawl God, out. Be horrible. I sprawl out and I put all my weight on them. And then I try to put my hand on their mouth while I work my hand around their neck and I grab that little You're already tail. one of those guys. I'm a, <laughs> or I'll post up and I'll push on their diaphragm so they can't just breathe. Do it with a fist. That's it. On their face. Get a, get so. a fist in the neck and one in the diaphragm. Yeah. And then they're like, what the fuck? Because they, they thought that I'm going to try to fucking... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to try to pick you up and, and twist you up like a pretzel. Like, I'm going to conserve my energy because I know I don't have a lot in my tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, man, back to the, the fitness thing. So, it's like, here's what I wanted to ask you. To remain healthy. Because that's a big... I, I never yeah. gave a fuck about, like, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to die. I don't care. Now, all of a sudden... And it wasn't with kids because I had kids and I'm like, yeah, okay, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. But then now I'm like, holy shit, I got to do, I got to stay alive. I got to stay alive, man. Yeah. My brain's going, my energy's going like, man, I can't get Alzheimer's. I, like, I got shit to do. What, you know, the best practices are, are you had mentioned, you know, eat the multivitamin and the fish oil and those yeah. types of things. But what can one do just to, to not, get heart disease or cardiovascular or cancer like what are some things best practices for the, that? the number one is the stress man the number one is the stress like you got to control your response to stress right because you're gonna have things when you look at stress you go okay i've got two different types of stress i got stress i can get rid of i got stress that i can't that i have to learn how to change my response like your kids are you gonna go sell your kids to gypsies if they fucking piss you off probably not are you going to buy a dog kennel and put your kids in a dog kennel? Not unless you want child protective services showing up and taking them away. Like you, that's not an option. And that sucks by the way. That sucks. That's, like that's you should be sucks. able to do that. Yeah. But, but if your car is like, keeps breaking down, you have the option to take it to CarMax and sell it and get away from it and buy something else or whatever. So in the car situation, you can get rid of the stress. 
when you look at your kids and you know your work and things like that in a lot of cases you can't get rid of that stuff but you have to change your perception and your response to the stress your response to that stress is more important than the actual stressor so in that case when i have to do counseling with people i set them down i go okay well why does that make you feel that way blah 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 okay well you're allowing it to make you feel a certain way and then they're like oh you're right so we start doing things like journaling. We do positive affirmations. We do a grateful log. So before bed, they'll write down some things they're grateful for. So what we're trying to do is over time, rewire that neuronal network in the brain so they start thinking about things in a more positive manner than, than a negative manner. Because if you, look at, if you look at advertisements and news and media and all the stuff that you're de dealing with every day, everything's so negative. And it's all done by design to keep you down, right? And to make you buy shit to make you feel better. So if we can create things where people are now, okay, I'm gonna, ref I refuse to watch the news. I refuse to deal with the media. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do me and let everybody else do them. And I'm gonna do my fucking positive affirmations. I'm a good person. I do this. I'm losing what weight. I'm being healthy. I'm doing, you know, eating my veggies. And they're doing all this journaling. And over time, they start switching their mindset to so that. You know, uh, something I, I often ask my classes, I say, is the glass half empty or is the glass half full? And everyone's going to pick one or the other. And I go, well, the glass is always full of something. Like, you've seen that meme. It's a popular meme. It's always either filled with liquid or gas. That's a positive mindset. And that's what you have to get people doing because stress is what's going to fuck you up. He'd get you on the fucking ground and he would fucking get you in some weird, like weird fucking headlock thing where he'd put the, his form against the bridge of your nose and just crank you and it was the worst it's i, I choked me out all day i he was so fucking strong i felt like he he was gonna break your nose yeah and he wouldn't he'd yeah. just get to that point where you feel it start to crack and then he'd stop but should, he, uh, he was fucking brutal just try some catch wrestling man because they'll do shit that feels i don't know if it's the exact same thing but feels because like, he does wrestling too like the yeah. His place is, it was down the street from Pelican Group. And I decided to get back into judo because I was, I was up there bored as shit because Rhode Island's a miserable fucking place to be. And so I found a judo place and it just happens to be like the number one competitive judo oh, shit. club in the entire <laughs> United States. They had like a Moroccan national team member there. Fuck. Then four U.S. team members. His daughter was an Olympic medalist at like 16. Like it was, but it was too... And they did they did wrestling and they did judo, but it was just too fucking hardcore. Like <laughs> when I when I grew up doing judo, you'd be like, okay, so okay, grab here, grab here, and then you do okay. Now we're gonna do a, a hook here, or we're gonna sweep or whatever, yeah. you know, circle throw, hip toss, yeah. and you would just practice and practice. They were like, nah, fuck that. It was just like randori the whole time. Like here's the throw. <laughs> now try it, and you'd be, there'd be people just fucking each other up all over the place and so you either you either figured it out or you just got fucked up every session <laughs> then i broke my ribs and i was like <laughs> i was like thank god you and your fucking ribs man no <clears throat> i had that the uh moroccan national team member i was helping him with some nutrition stuff he goes ah here i'll i'll teach you we'll do private judo lessons and you help me with my nutrition i'm like oh sweet so we get in and he's on his back and we're rib to rib and I've got him in a choke, and I go to I go to switch my hips over. Our ribs do like this, and something popped, and I was like, ah, oh, that didn't feel good. So the next day I come in, and there's a, a white belt, and he's like, yeah, this is like my third time I've ever done judo, and I'm like, oh, cool, okay, cool. Don't worry, I did this, you know, I'm kind of I don't really know what I'm doing, but I've done this before. Don't worry, we'll just, you know, you I'll protect you, you protect me. Then he just proceeds to start slamming me into the fucking floor. Every throw was slamming. And he slammed me the third or fourth time. And I was like, oh, I'm done. I, and I stood up and I was like, my ribs are broken again. And I was like, fuck off. All right. Last three minutes now. Oh, fuck. Yeah, no, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, you, you were talking about de-stressing and all this sort of stuff yep. and, and muscle nerds and your legacy, the, the passion of the Luke passion. Lehman. <laughs> yeah, man. So one of the things I always ask people is like, a lot of times it's like, what did you get? You know, what's one, like, I love talking to people. Yeah. I, like, I really like it, man. Science, all that intellectual shit. Fuck God. Ah, not me. Sciencey shit. 
What have you gotten the last time from just meeting somebody and talking to them and having that human non sociopathic moment? What was the, what was the last, the last, the last like random conversation? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's actually a good one. It's actually, you know, sometimes people ask you that type of thing. You're like, fuck, I don't know. I was in London. I was at Westfield mall in shepherd's bush and I was sitting there and I had gotten some sushi at a convenient uh, grocery store and I was about to eat. And there was a, a gentleman talking to this old Ethiopian woman. She had to be like 400 years old. And then he left. And so she looked at me and she goes, Hey, you can come sit with me. And I was like, okay. So I want to sit with her. And we start talking. She goes, Oh, you're American. I said, well, I'm, I'm Texan, so, which is different. It's that's the country that's attached to America. Right. And so she starts talking about Trump and I'm like, Oh, here we go. I've got it. Here we go. I got to hear somebody else talk shit about Trump. She's like, fucking talking about how America is the greatest country in the world and she fucking loves Trump and he's the first person to actually get shit done and doesn't fuck around. And I was like, oh my God. It's finally somebody who can see it from both sides of the coin, which is not normal over there because normally... Right. Yeah, big time, yeah. Because over there, it's just like America. You got to pick a side and yeah. I don't pick sides. I'm like, people go, what do you feel about Trump? And I go, well, I like these things here and these things I don't like. Right. What did you like about Obama? I like these things and these things I didn't like, you know, but I don't totally like or dislike. But she was talking about like escaping. I think she was talking about escaping communism at one point and getting out of Africa and all this and how she came to, to London and went to university and and became something. And then her daughter came over and like. Oh, Get sorry. Guy away. Sorry, my mom's like talking you off. I'm like, no, no, no. You go shop. We're still talking. Yeah. Keep shopping. It was a really cool experience, and um, to be able to talk to somebody with the types of uh, um, stories she had, and the uh, I had another one with um, a very famous, uh, a very famous strength coach who basically he's Hungarian and he escaped communist uh, uh, Romania. And basically, at one point, he was trying to, to escape. And they said, well, um, you're a really good athlete. If you sign on to be a communist, you can get on the national team and we'll let you mm. travel. And so he said, okay. So he signed on to be a communist, got on a national team, left, and defected. <laughs> Never went back. Man, my, so my camera's probably going to run out during this. But I knew a guy that, man, this guy, he just passed away a couple of years ago. But he was put in the concentration camps by Hitler. He was Hungarian. When he got out of there, he got thrown in prison again by the communists. <laughs> it's like so crazy. It's like this guy spent like, I don't know, 10 years and in, incarcerated for political bullshit. Yeah. Crazy. But, you know, you had said this that like, man, if we could just like talk to people, stop talking shit, stop this online, whatever. You know what? Stop, stop being white. Stop being black. Stop being male. Stop being female. Just be fucking human. And talk to people and don't have any preconceived ideas about what you think their background is or where they're from or where they're going. Just fucking talk to people and accept their ideas. You don't have to agree with people, but you've got to listen to their ideas or you don't have to listen to their ideas. But, you know, people need to stop being so goddamn sensitive. Like, just pe let people have their opinions and either agree with it or don't, but at least listen. Man, I don't even think it's that they're overly sensitive. I think it's it's like why somebody eats so much fucking goddamn food yeah. it's not because they're starving it's because they're they're not getting the right nourishment they're stressed or whatever the fucking deal i don't know i eat a lot of food so <laughs> it's, it's like I'm, i shouldn't be talking but it's like people are so like emotion or not i don't know they're socially starved yeah. that they're getting in fights with like people online about stupid shit and well, it means so much they they at some point they're trying to fill something that's yeah. they've, they've got a hole somewhere in their soul they're trying to fill it with the wrong things and being going out and trying to be a crusader against all this shit that you think is happening in the world isn't the right thing to do. The right thing to do is to try to work together and, and get ideas together and, and be nice to each other and fucking respect each other. Even if you don't, even if I don't agree with things that you believe in and you don't agree with things I believe in, I still need to have that respect that it's your life to live and, and you're entitled to think and say whatever you want as long as you're not hurting somebody else. Cool. On that note, we're done. Donskis. Boom. You can find out about me at uh, Facebook, uh, Muscle Nerds. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, Muscle Nerds. Then uh, Instagram is Muscle Nerds underscore health. 
Uh, you can also find me on Facebook, Luke Lehman, L-E-A-M-A-N. And we have a really shitty website you can take a look at, which is musclenerds.net. We do online training, we do consultations, we do education seminars all over the world, program design for trainers, we do uh, health stuff, all kinds of shit. Just, yeah, just if you send an email to info at musclenerds.net, we can tell you uh, kind of what we do. And uh, we give uh, free handies to every purchase, so... <laughs> this is more like <laughs> well, you're, half, you're half Japanese. So. <laughs> All right, Hiram. I still haven't, but I should. <laughs>